A patient with history of trauma a few years ago presents with progressively restricted mouth opening. This could most likely be due to. The, so what they're trying to tell you is there are a few important points that you need to remember. That the first most important is the history of trauma. This is your key important point. And the second important point is restricted mouth open, which is progressive. So when you look at this, what the examiner is trying to tell you is that there was a patient or let's say for example there was a boxer and he was in a match and he has been hit by, on one side by an opponent and when he was hit by this opponent the patient did not feel anything however the, his, there is a trauma that has been elicited because of the boxing over time this patient who this boxer who was traumatized he has been unable to open his mouth and the mouth opening has been continuously decreasing in sense if in the sense if today his mouth opening on the day of the boxing match was say 40 mm in a month his mouth opening decreased to 35 and after that it would have decreased to 30 so the patient was also having the issue of unable being unable to chew properly Secondly, he is also not able to talk properly. So based on that, we can say that the trauma is the, is the reason why the patient is unable to open his mouth. So directly we can say the trauma is the etiology for decreased mouth open. Okay, now that we have understood this, the main reason why this could have happened could be because remember one thing that the body, whenever there is any form of inflammation, the resolution of inflammation or necrosis is either necrosis or by warding off the bacteria. Now, if there is a particular uh, cell that has undergone necrosis or a group of cells that have undergone necrosis, the body, what will it try to do is it will either try to engulf the entire thing and replace it by fibrous tissue or it will just calcify that entire necrosed mass. In this situation, what could have happened is because there was a trauma, the cells in that region, the myocytes or whatever is there, they would have undergone necrosis and because of the necrosis, the patient would have had calcification of that necrosed mass and that is what is traumatic myositis ossificans. So what happens is the etiopathogenesis for traumatic myositis ossificans is you have a particular trauma. This trauma has elicited cell death. Because of the cell death, the cells have undergone necrosis completely and these group of cells which are the myocytes because usually it is the masseter which undergoes the fibers of the masseters which undergo necrosis in this situation. So they undergo necrosis. And this necrosed mass gets turned into a calcified mass. The fib this fi calcified mass becomes uh, makes it difficult for the patient to open his mouth, and mouth opening goes on decreasing. So that is the answer over here. Mesenteric hypertrophy, on the other end, is the other end of the spectrum where the cells have become bigger in size because of excessive fun function. The most important example of this would be when the patient is having bruxism where because of the excessive forces, grinding forces that have been elicited, the masseter ends up taking up all the forces of this bruxism or all the forces of the mastication and because of that in order to compensate for those excessive forces the cells of the masseter become larger and that in eventually leads to an increase in the size of the muscle as a whole and that is called mastectic hypertrophy duchenne hypertrophy on the other hand is a type of autoimmune disorder and that is a spectrum that probably we'll have to deal with in a different point in time and ankylosis again this could have been a reason why it could the patient would have had this history but the reason way how you differentiate between traumatic myositis ossificans and ankylosis is that ankylosis mainly occurs in the region of a fracture where the condyle is broken in this situation they have said that the patient has had trauma a few years ago if it would have been a recent history of trauma and after the recent history the patient has say come to you within three months or four months and there is complete uh, inability to open the mouth in traumatic myositis at least they have mentioned that progressively restricted mouth opening in ankylosis there will be complete inability to open the mouth so there will be complete mouth closure and the patient will not be able to open the mouth at all so that is how you differentiate between ankylosis and traumatic myositis ossificans.